Speaking of building blocks, uh, a lot of clubs trying to put building blocks in place for the new season. You've know, got to find some foundation first. We, uh, particularly <laughs> Arsenal, um, by the way, who um, fell apart like a badly designed Lego set towards the end of last season. Uh, but they are trying to address the balance. We know that Gabriel Jesus is likely to be on his way uh, to the Red Half of North London. And they are the favourites as it stands to sign Rafinha as well. Now, this is an interesting one because it goes back to the point you were making, Darren Bent, about Frankie de Jong and how much he wants to be a Manchester United player. Because I know that Rafinha really wanted to join Barcelona this yeah. summer. That was the move that he had his heart set on because of their financial problems. They've not been able to match uh, the transfer fee that Leeds want, which I believe is around about £60 million. Pounds. Are you happy to take Rafinha knowing that Arsenal's second choice? Um, again, it's, it's a difficult one because he's a good player and Arsenal need to bolster the squad. I would take him. I can understand why he wants to go to Barcelona. I've, I think I've been hearing that for a while now, that like he wants to join Barcelona, but that, that can't happen. And I always wondered how Barcelona were going to be able to do that because I thought they were in financial difficulty. But for Arsenal, it's another good player through the door. Gabriel Jesus looks like it's nearly done. So yeah, they're going about the business the right way. I mean, I still would like to see another centre midfielder come in. I think Tillemans had been linked, but I'm not quite sure they're going to get that over the line. But I think he might end up staying at Leicester, you know. See, he's one I'd love to see coming as well. So if you talk about them three players joining Arsenal, three very good signings. Yeah, I, I, I was praising a lot of Gabriel Jesus yesterday. I, I thought it was a great signing, and I still do. But I think we need to stop praising it that much. I mean, this is a forward that's not scored over 20 Premier League goals yet. In a season. Yeah, but there's, there's some greats that haven't done that. In a team that last season scored 99 goals. Mm, they they score yeah. a lot of goals. They score five often. He's going to be a good signing, I think. And I think the reason being, because he's never been the main man. He's never been the focal point of, of Manchester City. He's going to Arsenal, and I think he's going to be he the main be the man. Focal point, yeah. He'll be the main number nine. Although, again, I'm led to believe he doesn't like playing number nine. He prefers out wide. I think... Maybe Kevin Hatch or Andy Brassell had said that recently. That I think it was Tim Vickery, actually. Was it Tim Vickery? Sorry. And he prefers out wide. So whether they're going to just say, nope, you are the, the number nine for us, or whether they play two with Enketier. But it's a, it's a, it's a good signing. It's not outstanding. It's not, it's not whether he scores 20 plus Premier League goals for Arsenal remains to be seen. Rafinha would be a, he's a great player, Rafinha. But again, that we were talking about earlier, does. It's his second choice. Is his heart really going to be in yeah, it? He yeah. wants to join, or he wanted to join Barcelona, or is see, this going to be a stepping yeah, stone see, to join R Barcelona? This might be a bit different just because it's a step up in size of the yeah. club. For De Jong, Barcelona is a massive club, Man United, like equally on the same par. Yeah, I think if he if he if he's feeling that this is potentially wants to join Barcelona, he's going to wait till they're financially capable to to come and get him. But he'll join Arsenal. Then that's that's a, a good sign yeah. for me because he want to put it in. He wants yeah, to show that. Yeah, and then who knows that that could push push Arsenal over the line to to make the top four. I think it's going to be close. I think from one and two, I believe it's going to be the same. Manchester City, Liverpool, in in what order? Probably Manchester City top. We who knows, but. Third down is going to be interesting this season. I think it's going to be a good race. It depends what Chelsea does over the next coming weeks and, and obviously Manchester United. Otherwise, they're going to be concerned that Arsenal and Spurs are doing business. In terms of the price tag, it's interesting because I'm led to believe that at the start of the window, they put a £50 million price tag on Calvin Phillips, the same on Rafinha. Now, obviously, Phillips has gone for a bit less than that, 42. Oh, what, a, what a signing that was. Rising man. to 45, which I know a lot of Leeds fans felt was probably not enough financial reimbursement but what that does mean is now that I think Leeds are going to be looking for £60 million for Rafinha which is not too bad but I mean Crookie I don't know if you know the answer to it but how have they managed to get Calvin Phillips for only £42 million because you, you look at a lot of price tags that have been banished about like Declan Rice some people talk about £100 million for, for Declan Rice um, but then you've seen I guess you've seen two holding midfield players Calvin Phillips one going for 42 and Basuma going to Spurs for 30 mm -hmm. yeah both cheap Do, I mean how have they managed I to mean, get him I mean the Basuma one makes uh, more sense because obviously he was in the final year of his contract yeah. I, I guess with Calvin Phillips maybe they feel a bit of loyalty he's a, he's a local boy he's come through the system he wasn't going to go to Manchester United I think that was uh, one of their fears earlier um, in the year I guess they just felt they couldn't stand in the way of a team like Manchester City but you, you look at what City have done 51 million for, for Haaland 40 five million maximum if all those add-ons are, are triggered for Calvin Phillips that's that's pretty good business although I'm still not sure that Calvin Phillips is 
a top, top player. Oh, You're no. talking about a replacement for Fernandinho and someone who's going to oust Rodri for the Man City team. I'm not sure on that. Yeah, but my only thing about that is when Rodri, for, not Rodri, when um, when Rodri actually first came in, people question marks about him. Well, I don't think he's good enough. He got slaughtered, Rodri. Fernandinho, when he first came in, people went, mm, is he is he that good? I think Calvin Phillips, I know he's, I think he's 26, so he's not young, 27. No. I think he will develop even and get better because I thought he was brilliant for England at the Euros. And I think he's exactly what they need. Mm. And a lot of people have said, well, why would he go to City and just be like a bench warmer? He mm. will get enough game time, by the way. The amount of games that that club's involved in, League Cup, FA Cup, Champions League, Premier League games, and they go deep into their competitions, he'll get more than enough game time. Is there not a touch of the Fabian Delfts about it? Well, look, he went there and filled his boots. Won everything there is to win other than the Champions League. I think he's, it's, <laughs> it's the, in terms of the fee, 42, well, 45 it, it, that he could rise to, it is enough to sit him on the bench if, if they wanted to. And I think... They do it with Jack Grealish for a hundred million. I do think he'll play. He's been play. He'll be playing number two to Rodri yeah, for a little will. while. But that's good. That's healthy. That's Rodri's healthy. the best hold in the Premier League. Yeah, that's healthy for him. That's healthy for Rodri because he'll be thinking, "I want to stay in my position." And it's healthy for Manchester City to have a player like Calvin Phillips, you know, ch- chomping at the bit to get in above above Rodri. I am concerned, a little bit concerned for Leeds. And I said this yesterday. I, you was on, I know, with, with me and Dan Windle, Crookie, and a little bit concerned. And Leeds supporters were saying, we're absolutely fine. I know they've signed, who is it, Aronson and Christensen from Salzburg and, and Mark Rocker. But these are unproven Premier League players. And I know y- you, you don't know if you can play in the Premier League till you do. But they scraped up last season. And to lose Calvin Phillips and potentially Rafinha, two of their best players... I think other players are going to be thinking, hang on, are we are we doing enough here or are they going to be looked to get out as well? So, a I'm little bit to- concerned for Leeds. I'm not totally sold on Jesse Marsh either still. Mm. Um, mm. You know, they were staying up by the skin of their teeth on that last day of the season. I think they would have probably gone down had Bielsa remained in charge. But I think you're right. I think if you, you're talking about the relegation places, I think that the three teams who are coming up, we're going to talk about Notts Forest or Nottingham Forest in just a moment. I think Leeds will be down there as well. On the subject of Forest, um, as you know, Darren, they smashed their transfer record yesterday. £17 million uh, for a Nigerian striker by the name of Taiwo Awonji. He signed uh, from the Bundesliga, uh, scored a lot of goals in Germany for Union Berlin last season, was on the books of Liverpool for six years without playing a game in the Premier League. We know that Dean Henderson is going there on loan from Manchester United. That'll be a solid signing. To Forest. To Forest. My, my only thing about that, is that because the goalkeeper they've got hasn't signed his new contract? I yeah. think he's openly come out and said that he wants to he wants to leave as well. Oh, okay. Samba. Fair enough. Then. And I think they're going to sign two goalkeepers Which because is, I believe John Ruddy is going there as well as, as backup to Henderson. It's a strange one though. Sam, Bry, is it Bryce Samba? Yeah. yeah. To, to, to do what he done in the playoffs and then say, right, that's me done. I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. I, I find that strange. And Dean Henderson's a fantastic signing for them. I, I think he'll do he'll do really well he'll have a point to prove as well Henderson because yep. he believed that he would be Manchester United I mean, I, number I, I, one I can tell you first hand he thought going in, after when the Euros were going on and we spoke to him and he was injured he believed that he was going back that following season the start of this one just gone mm. as their number one I mean, and he got Covid he, didn't he yeah. he's, yeah. Not, he's not and, short of confidence and De Gea came honest. back in incredible form yeah I mean the, the new guy the one is it o, Owen G is that his name I, I don't know what he's going to be like. I can't say I know much about him, but they've spent a lot of money. And again, I know Andy Brassell. I, I, I watched him on, on the TV and he spoke very highly of him and said he's perfect for the Premier League. So I'm looking forward to, to seeing what he can produce. And a couple more possible incomings at Nottingham Forest. One that I've been speaking about for a while on Talk Sport. Morgan Gibbs-White on loan, of course, at Sheffield United last season. I think they're ready to test Wolves' resolve to keep Gibbs-White They've offered him a new contract, Wolves. He hasn't signed it so far. Wants certain guarantees that he will play first-team football. So keep an eye on that one. Uh, and Nico Williams uh, as well from Liverpool, uh, possibly heading to Nottingham Forest. So uh, they're being busy. Uh, Bournemouth have signed a couple of players as well. I think Fulham uh, have got Paulinha coming in, a, a, a midfielder from Portugal. So the newly promoted club's having a go. Absolutely. I think they need to stand the Premier League. It's going to be tough, mm. but I'd like to see it. 